Hey, thanks, Gilbert, uh, for having me. I'll just jump to my share screen. Thank you for your time and, and, uh, and, and listening to our value proposition. My name is Brad Rourke, and I'm the president and CEO of Scotty Resources, and happy to be with you today. Of course, I'll be making some forward-looking statements, as, as all junior exploration companies do. I think the three most important things when looking at investing in a, in a junior exploration company would be the people involved, the jurisdiction in which you're trying to do business in, and, and of course, the geology. I think what I'd like to make the case in this short period of time is that we check all those boxes quite comfortably. And even though I think this is the most important slide of my presentation, we're just going to go through because it's very easy for you to go back and do this due diligence. And in and, and, and the interest of time, uh, if the rest of the story uh, checks out, please, please go back and, and look at the accomplishments of my board and, 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 and team. And I truly run the company via the board. So the opportunity or the asset uh, in question that we're talking about is a past producing gold mine in Northwest British Columbia in Canada uh, ca called the Scotty Gold Mine in the Golden Triangle. I've spent most of my life living in this area, and this is how I came across uh, the opportunity. So I'm going into my sixth year, but let me tell you why I got involved. And I started off as an investor in an existing company and ended up taking that company over uh, during that bear market for a whole bunch of reasons. But uh, these are the reasons I thought it was good value. Identified a past producing gold mine that produced a half ounce per ton in the early 1980s. And from my due diligence, the only reason it, it closed down was economics of the time. Uh, gold rolled over from 700 to $300 an ounce in, in a very short period of time. And this, this mine had a $20 million loan from the Royal Bank of Canada. And back then it was 22% interest is what they're paying. So when the commodity price rolled over, it just made very, very difficult for this mine to operate, even though it was recovering over a half ounce per ton. Uh, other things to note, the second reason why I got involved is the little town I lived in close to here also has the office for Peritium and for Seabridge KSM project. And they were building a power line to the Bruce Jack mine. And uh, it was going right beside the Scotty Gold Mine. So those are the two two interesting information pieces where uh, I wrote a check, invested in, in this small junior company that ended up taking over. But I'd also draw your attention to the success stories going on in our area. Uh, Bruce Jack is the largest single producing gold mine on the planet Earth, produces about 350,000 ounces, and it's just coming into its second year now. Uh, right to my southern borders, the premier mine, which was the largest gold mine at one time, and it is just being reconstituted with a company called Ascot Resources, and they've already made the financing uh, and building out the refurbishment of a new 2,800 ton a day mill, which we anticipate in less than two years should, should uh, be operating. So that's a big catalyst for us. So we've got Bruce Jack. We also have KSM is just north of us, uh, largest gold deposit on the planet Earth. And then we have GT Gold in the area, Skeena Resources with the refurbishment of the SK Creek mine, Tudor Gold, uh, the SNP mine. So we're in, in a really good jurisdiction. I'd like to also point out that's a unique feature for an exploration company. Is we have a mining permit. We're not telling people we're going mining. We're, we're going to show a pathway uh, to a larger runway before we think of that. But that might be interesting for people in the future. So here's a map of, of where we are. And the dark blue is, is Scotty Resources. And you can see I dominantly have two neighbors, which is Pritium and there's Ascot. And everything that, that Scotty has is, is, is in dark blue. I'd like to point out that it's 100% paid for. I, that's not exactly true, but we have very little debt, uh, uh, two payments of $50,000 now. So for the whole property. No onerous uh, royalties or streams. So in the bear market in the last five years, one of the things I did is I've done about 12 different transactions. And originally I had 400 hectares. 
And now we're just over 25,000 in, in dominantly two, two contiguous pieces. So we're, we're really happy uh, with that. Now here's a picture of the original 400 hectares or the Scotty gold mine. Uh, it's, as you can see, it's road accessible. I took this picture standing on the road. And I just want to, for reference, as we go in, into our presentation, just kind of take a mental snapshot. Look at the A portal on the far right. That uh, is close to the blueberry vein. We'll talk a little bit about that. I've got two tailing ponds you can see there. We'll talk about those in, in a little bit. There used to be a lake and because of glacial recession, that lake is now drained. And so that also creates some opportunities for us and we won't talk about those today. But the main vein that produced a half ounce per ton basically follows those four yellow triangles center left of the screen. And it's an east-west striking vein. What we know now is Scotty has at least 13 gold bearing veins all striking east-west. So another thing to notice, M zone, O zone. The O zone we'll talk about is about a hundred meter parallel vein that, that's been identified, which is parallel to the main vein that produced all the gold. And then pretend if you went over top of that mountain and down on the other side, and, and we'll speak about that in, in, in short order too. So again, even though we have uh, 25,000 hectares, 80% of our work is focused on the map that you see here right now. I've posted past intercepts from days gone by from which we've built our model. We actually have 600 holes and production records. Uh, so that's, you know, we started a, building a model about four years ago and, and I have one of the top firms in the, in the industry, Equity Exploration. They've done all my geotechnical work uh, and they work at the Red Chris Mine and, and Pure Gold, another successful story in Canada. So I have a, a very credible team uh, uh, looking after the geology on side of this on top of our internal team as, as well. But as you can see, I've posted, of course, some of the better intercepts, but they're, they're bonanza grade. It's very, very high grade. And I wanna point your attention to the ones with asterisks because the very first drill program that we ever did was only 2019. So, our, and we did a small drill program of only 2000 meters and it was over a dispersed area. We did the Scotty gold mine, the blueberry vein and the Ben vein. We didn't own the land outside of that at that time uh, when we got the permit. So that was a, our first drill program. And we only did 2000 meters just to kind of test the theories that we made from um, the modeling. And we were very excited that we hit on all three different targets for such a small drill program. We can't speak about it too much, but the 11 gram over 11 meter, I think the asterisk is wrong on, on the presentation, but it was the 11.72 grams per ton over 10.95 meters. It's a very exciting hole when you understand it's a 50 meter step out in front of the vein that was producing a half ounce per ton. So that confirmed to us that this is still continuing on. And it was a very expensive hole. We had to go to the top of the mountain and, and to hit these veins perpendicular. There's no stations underground anymore uh, to drill if you wanted to show for potential size. So that's why we did that. On the bend vein, we hit a four uh, uh, meter hole of, of, of 73 grams per ton. And that's on surface a different type of deposit there. So we have to remember these uh, numbers, that were not apples and apples we're comparing. Uh, very happy with that. And then if the blueberry vein, we hit probably the most exciting, even though the grams are only uh, 7.4, it's a broad wide zone of 34 meters. And that surprised us. We were actually paid a million dollars for that square to get the blueberry vein because there's an east-west vein uh, that was very high grade and that's what we were interested in and as we were trying to drill that vein well in advance of where it's projected to hit we hit this broad zone of mineralization and, and very very uh, confused us but it was an exciting hit again on surface and we've done a lot of follow-up uh, with that and we'll um, I'll show we'll talk about that here in a bit the world changed for scotty resources almost two years ago when we finally got control of the Summit Lake property, 
Uh, it was privately held for 30 years and it was, I tried to buy it from, for years and years and then the opportunity came up and, and we jumped at it and we're glad that we did. So when we drilled our first program in 2019, it was the very first time we were allowed to walk on these lands. And what we came away with is five zones, all very interesting geologically, great intercept, every, or great grab samples. But all our team did was walk the margins of the glaciers. There was no information because it was a private company. We didn't know, it's never been drill tested. We knew that. And so we just walked the margins of the glaciers and you can see all five of those are pretty exciting, especially when it's the very first time that, that we walked on them. We drilled the domino this year. And of course, those are the highest grades, but I would have drilled it anyways, because the proximity to the Scotty gold mine and, and, and the structural uh, theories that we have for how this deposit is. Here's a picture right above Scotty gold mine. So on the right, is a Scotty gold mine produced a half ounce per ton. You go up that mountain down and here's the domino zone. And this is, uh, we found a zone or what we thought was 700 meters by 200 meters wide in our first year uh, of sampling. We went and drilled that. But what we see now, and we're gonna see on the next slide, it's a lot larger than, than we initially thought from the work that, that we did this year. But if you just put a tunnel from the underground works into Scotty gold mine, you would come right out on this domino zone. Here's another photograph of the domino zone. And so what, one of the things we did this year is we sent a massive uh, mapping and surface program because of what we found the year before. And what we figured out is this is not 700 by 200. This is at 900 by at least 450 meters wide. And the red dots show bonanza grade surface samples. And we, there's no float or rock. We chip that right out, it's in place. Again, Scotty being east-west striking veins, one of the things we see here on the moon dance and the mystic showing, is both those are striking towards each other and there's an EM anomaly underneath that ice. That's exciting. And then you can see the drill holes that we did drill at Domino. We'll talk about those in a minute that upper zone, that was the original zone, but what we did is an IP grid and we can see, not only did we find more uh, high grade samples, uh, the, the, the geophysics are showing us that there's some very interesting targets and it's on strike. That makes it very, very exciting. So uh, we had a successful year and we'll talk about those in a bit, but we're excited to get back at it. One more picture on Domino. Those are our drill pads in, in yellow. The drill traces would be depicted in lines. We just simply drilled under the high grade samples that we found. We didn't have geophysics to, to work off like we will for this year. And we just, if we fit, found structure, we'd pull back and they're all very short holes or just test holes. Again, on that photograph, we have two tailings ponds. We've done three years of work on it. Uh, it's averaging 2.1 grams for the whole bit, six grams at the bottom. The mill didn't run efficiently the first year is what we heard. Uh, and we've done volume estimates and we've done all the metallurgy where there's flotation or cyanide. And so we, we're working now on an ESG uh, situation where we can help clean this up and maybe unlock a little bit of value. And so we're just working on, on these things now, but we've done about every study we can in, in three years. And again, averaging 2.1 grams for about 150,000 tons uh, and you can just drive up to them, as, as you can see Megan there, just doing the hand augering. And we've done over a hundred of those and taking consistent uh, uh, measurements all the way down. And another thing to point, they're not our liability. That rests with the crown, with the government, unless I put a rubber tire on it, but they've been very encouraging with us to do the studies so we can be part of the cleanup. So, to, to finish off what we did for 2020, it's our second drill program. We did 7,000 meters uh, of drilling. We did a new EM survey, really tight line spacing, really low to the ground. We know that EM shows up very well. Our, our gold is situated in peritite and pyrite rich veins, really, really lights up with the EM. So we're excited to get that out. Again, we did a little IP over a couple select targets. Ascot has had great success with IP. This is our first year trying. It's only our second year drilling. We're excited by what we see and we'll be drilling that next year. 
we aggressively been mapping and sampling uh, brand new lands that no one had seen. We had full-time crews pretty much all summer. And then we did a lot of metallurgy, metallurgy, metallurgy uh, testing of those tailings. So our first news release that came out in October uh, was very good. We couldn't have been happier. And that's that ozone, which is 100 meters parallel vein to the M zone that produced a half ounce. And as you can see our drill trace, we went to the top of the mountain. We didn't go underground. All those other drill holes are from underground drilling from when they did in the 80s. They never really mined out the ozone because this is when it closed down. But some of the highest grades ever found uh, were drilled at those holes. So we went and did a 30 meter step out from any drill hole that had ever been done. And we're only maybe 50 meters from underground workings. And we came up with 109 gram over 2.53 meters. So very exciting. And that's not on this presentation, but we just put out four more, a few more holes from around the ozone. Again, we were just testing uh, this year and they all had great mineralization. Not that good, but I mean, that's, that's a fantastic drill hole for us. That same news release, we, we put out some great results on Blueberry and the bend. And you need to look at that with different eyes. That's high grade underground. This is potentially open pitable on the road. And we'll talk about it because those are, are, are really exciting grades as well. All right, Brett, you may like to wrap up uh, if you want to answer some questions. Okay, sure. So here's the blueberry uh, zone. Again, we hit that seven and a half grams over 35 meters. We definitely tested that. And as you can see, just all north south trending. We never ex uh, anticipated that when we bought the property, but we're really excited uh, what we see here because we have high grade above below, and this will be a focus of our drill program for this year. Again, domino zone, these are our first drill holes. There's high grade mineralization on strike. That's what we were trying to test. That's what we hit. So we're very excited to be there. Again, uh, high grade samples. And then the company, uh, we still have $3 million in the bank. Only two warrant holders in my company, one being Eric Sprott, he owns 75% of our warrants and another office out of Switzerland, family office, own about the other 25%. Um, you know, we have finally got some institutional holders. Up until two years ago, no one even heard of us. I, I self-funded myself. So with that, I hope I've left a, a few minutes for questions, Gilbert. Yeah, let me able to just get one or two. So the first one, just uh, asking you about the recent exploration, some of the drilling results that you reported recently, does those uh, meet your expectation or and many more to come? Well, we have, we have some more drill results to come. And up until now, yeah, more, we, we couldn't be happier with our drilling. The market, I think all of us are kind of being put off to the side, but no, what we followed up on, we couldn't be happier. We're, we're very pleased with our drilling. We'll be back at it next year for sure. Sure. One last question from James. Uh, why is your share price still so, uh, I would say, cheap and undervalued, whatever it means? <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wake up every day thinking that uh, myself. I think it's sentiment in the market right now. Um, I think people know that seasonality in the Golden Triangle, and they're true, but does that high grade overweight uh, seasonality? I think so. When you look at, we don't own any debt, two successful drill programs. We're sitting at the table. Maybe we need a strategic partner or something, but we're, we're working very hard. But I think it's value. And, and when you see dips like this, when there's known geology. Um, uh, I have three zones that could cover, that could carry a junior mining company uh, on its own. So I think there's a lot of value there. Thank you, Brett, for today. All right, thank you very much. Stay well.